This first date isn't going very well. Posted by you slash schlocky. We had spoken online before, but this was our first meeting, so naturally I was nervous. We were to meet at a coffee shop first, just in case either of us weren't feeling it. An understandable precaution considering all of the pitfalls that can come with online dating. I entered the cafe and didn't see anyone resembling my date. I turned around to go see if I had the right place and there she was. The top half of her head was beautiful. Long dark hair, bright blue eyes, and high cheekbones that peeked over the edge of her mask. She did a short wave. Nice to meet you in person. Her voice was soft and immediately recognizable. I had the right place and the right person. I told her my name again and she told me hers again. An unnecessary ritual, but it felt right for a first in person meeting. Aurelia is a pretty cool name. Sounds like a princess's name or something. I said, Well, my father is old fashioned. We ordered and sat outside due to the recent lockdown orders. It was cold, but not unbearable. We both took our masks off to enjoy our drinks, and the lower half of her face was just as lovely as it was over Skype. We hit it off pretty quickly and seemed to have pretty good chemistry. About a half hour into the date, she looked over my shoulder and a look of concern washed over her. What is it? I asked. Her eyes seemed to be glazed over and there was no response. What started as a look of concern changed to a blank stare. I turned to look over my shoulder and saw it. About 10 feet behind me was a man. He was tall, incredibly tall, and dressed in far too small raggedy clothes. His eyes were like egg yolks and his skin jaundiced. He carried with him a wet sack that dribbled a vicious pus like fluid onto the pavement. He ambled towards our table, like a child just learning to walk. He towered over us. He reeked of urine and feces. Got anything to eat? His words bubbled from his mouth. He stared at us, expectantly. No one moved or spoke for what felt like a very long time. I slowly reached for my wallet and withdrew a few bucks. I placed them on the table and slid them towards him. Dry mouthed, I said, T take it, maybe buy something, sorry that's all I got. The man looked at me, his expression unreadable. At this distance I saw his midsection was soaked and his shirt was nearly see-through. I saw something dark beyond the fabric. My best guess was a colostomy bag. It would have explained the smell. He spoke again. You'll need to eat too. He paused and his expression shifted to one of great sadness. Hunger will be all you know. He stepped away from the table and continued to walk down the sidewalk. I watched him for about a minute before he turned down an alley and I lost sight of him. Hey, are you okay? Aurelia asked. You spaced out for a little. She had a deeply concerned look on her face. You feel alright? I shook my head. No, I mean, did you see that guy? What the hell was going on there? She blinked. What guy? The guy that just came up to us? Frickin' scary guy? She laughed. I don't know what you're talking about. Everyone here seems normal to me. He talked to us. She furrowed her brow. I'm not sure if this is a joke or a reference, but I don't get it. I didn't know what to say. It had all certainly felt real to me, and I'd never been one to have an active imagination. I had no history of hallucinations. I spoke up. Sorry, I think I need to go home. I stood up from my chair. Sorry, it's not you, I just… I didn't finish my sentence and walked to my car. I turned the key and started the engine. I heard tapping on my window. Aurelia was at the side of my car, gesturing to roll down my window. 
I had the growing concern that she thought I was insane. Hey, if you're not feeling okay, that's all right. But I was enjoying this. Do you want to meet again? Sorry, I'm not sure what's going on. I think I'm just tired. I replied. She looked disappointed. Well, I already bought tickets for it. Tickets? I had no idea what she was talking about. We hadn't talked about doing anything other than coffee for the first date. Tickets? For what? Now she looked confused. The tickets? For the play? The Oriole? She held up her phone. On the screen were two digital ticket stubs. We just talked about it like five minutes ago. I told you about how they were showing it tonight and you said to go ahead and buy the tickets. The confusion shifted to frustration. If you don't want to go, that's fine, but you can be an adult about it. Don't have to make up some story. I could tell this wasn't going well. No, it isn't that. I just feel off, I guess. Not sick, just weird. Sorry, I'm being really strange right now. I breathed heavily and tried to compose myself. I could feel sweat dripping down the back of my neck. I spoke again. Sorry about this. What time is the play at then? Are they still doing it with all the COVID stuff going on? She nodded. Yeah, it's still going on. They just spaced the seats out and it's in about two hours. I mean, if I didn't scare you off, I'd like to go. Sorry again. She smiled. No, you didn't scare me off. If you're feeling up for it, let's do it. Actually, I took the bus to get here. Do you mind giving me a ride there? Please, with this result, I invited her in. We spent the time before the play just sitting in the car talking. I tried googling the Oriole play, but didn't find any results. Ariella noticed and nudged me. Hey, no spoilers, she said playfully. Just trying to look it up, can't find anything actually. She shrugged. Probably not, it's an obscure one. This isn't like a huge play, it's more like seeing a garage band but in the thespian world. Neat. I followed her directions and we arrived at an old two-story theater building. The building looked rough, lights were off and paint was peeling off of the walls. I couldn't make out the name above the doors due to how dark it was. Must have taken a wrong turn. I shifted the car in reverse to leave the lot. Nope, this is it. I think we're just early. That's okay, they know me. Ariella, that building is dead. No way there's a show playing there. She laughed. Trust me, it's open. I've been here plenty of times, come on. She opened the car door and started towards the building. I got out, locked my car, and followed her into the building. The interior of the place was reassuring. It was clean, well lit, and smelled faintly of lemon. We were in a small lobby area and there was an employee behind a register. He looked to be about 30 and had a professional look to him. Tickets, please. Ariella showed him both of them on her phone. Enjoy the show. Ariella led me down a hall and we came to a door with a sign that said auditorium. We entered the room which was a quaint 100 c auditorium. The auditorium was completely empty, but fully furnished. Very early. Means we get a good seat. We found two seats near the front and in the middle and sat down. The chairs felt brand new and were comfortable. The stage itself was well-sized. The overhead lights shined bright and golden curtains draped over the whole thing. After about 10 minutes, the lights dimmed and the curtains pulled apart on the stage, revealing a man wearing a bird mask. It looked like it was supposed to be a canary and was actually pretty well done. The man spoke with an impressively loud voice, maybe a little over the top for just the two of us. There is and was and will be an Oriole. There is and was and may be a man. The man was dying and was scared. The Oriole came to the man and asked him what was wrong. The man said that he was afraid to die and to be dead. The man came out from around the curtain in a similar bird mask. This one was an Oriole. Another man came out unmasked and fell on the ground in pain. The bird spoke and said, I can make you live and be alive. The man responded, Yes, please, I'll do anything. The bird moved closer and spoke again. I need only one thing from you. Give me a piece of you. 
for I am hungry and you wish to live. The man replied, I will give you a piece of me so that I may live. The bird moved closer again. Give me two pieces of your children, for I am hungry and you wish to live. The man begins to crawl away. I want to live, so I will give you two pieces of my children. The bird goes on all fours, crawls towards the man, and is above him. Give me three pieces of your grandchildren, for I am hungry and you do not wish to die. The man collapses in defeat and whimpers. I do not want to die. Take anything. I will. The bird tears red ribbons from the man and the curtains slowly close. A massive applaud erupts around us. I look around. There are thousands of chairs around us, and every single one is full. Thousands of people are standing and applauding. It is thunderous. I look to Ariella, and she is doing the same. She turned to face me and I screamed. Her skin is a dark yellow. Her once blue eyes are gone, replaced with two blotchy yellow spots. Her hair falls from her head like spider webs brushed off a wall. I look away and see thousands of faces, just like hers. The auditorium is impossibly large, this ceiling hundreds of feet high. The applause continues to roar. The building itself is shaking and I sink into my seat. Suddenly everyone stops. The room is silent and everyone returns to their seat. I hear the curtains open again and the man with the canary mask speaks again. There is an Oriole, and there is a man. On the stage, someone is tied to a post. They are wearing nothing but a golden bag on their head. Across from them is a nude woman in a bird mask. An Oriole. The Oriole approaches slowly. In her hand is a knife. She whispers, but I can hear it from hundreds of feet away. The Oriole grabs the bag and pulls it off of my head. The stage lights are blinding. The woman is in front of me, clutching the blade. She continues to whisper, I am hungry. I look away from her and at the crowd watching me. Thousands of faces, eyes like tiny suns. Only one in the crowd looks normal. I squirm in my seat and look at Oriella, who has wrapped her jaundice arms around mine. Who the hell is that on the stage? Why does... does it... She shushes me and asks, Do you want to live? I struggle with the bindings around my arms. They are taut, and I lack the strength. The pole behind me digs into my back. The Oriole is right in front of me, blade in hand. I scream. I don't want to die. I can hear the man on stage screaming. He sounds terrified, and he is the only noise I hear. The Oriole drives the knife into him. I feel a sharp pain in my stomach, and it is dragged down. Searing pain shudders throughout my body, and I see the Oriole covered in my blood. My vision blurs, and I feel my consciousness fading away. The Oriole drops the knife and shoves her hands into mine. I die on the stage. I watch the Oriole tear apart my insides. Intestines slide out like grotesque eels, and the smell of blood and excitement fill the air. My body in the stage shudders and twitches. The Oriole continues to rip me apart. I watch the audience stand in unison and begin to applaud. Ariella pulls on my arm and tells me to stand and clap, and I do. The crowd begins to speak, together and in one voice. The words are in a language I've never heard. I look to the stage and I see my organs. They begin to jostle and move. They twist and turn. They begin to make a shape. They form a frame, a morbid door. My door opens itself and beyond it lie impossible shapes and colors, things that defy existence itself. 
They slither out from my door and enter this world. Hey, get up. I feel a prodding in my right arm. Ariella is standing beside my bed, putting her clothes on. She looks at me with her blue eyes and smiles. That was a pretty fun night. Didn't mean to fall asleep after, cause now I'm probably gonna be late for work. She kisses me on the lips and starts out the door. She stops in the doorway and turns back. See you later tonight? I grumble in an audible response and she leaves. I feel like I've woken up from a coma. It takes me three more hours before I manage to get out of bed. I go into the bathroom and look at myself in the mirror. I look at my face. It has changed. The whites of my eyes are yellowing, as is my skin. I see an old scar that goes from my stomach down to my groin. I've never seen this scar in my life. I look at it closer and see something move across my stomach from under my skin. I double over, pain surges through my body. I feel a deep hollowness inside myself. I feel this, for I am hungry.